All right, let's get started. First of all, thank you so much for joining us today and happy spring. All right, there we go. Uh, before we get started, I'm gonna take you through a few housekeeping items. So first off, this webinar is being recorded and recording will be shared with you tomorrow via email. Uh, please feel free to submit questions at any time via the Zoom Q&A. Uh, Miley will be answering questions live at the end of the webinar. We will be having a poll question and it will be open for the duration of the webinar, so keep an eye out for that. And if you experience any technical difficulties, please alert us via the chat function and we will do our best to help you out with those. I'm Missy and I will be facilitating today and our resident Murphy expert, Miley, will be presenting. So it's very exciting. And here's our agenda. So we are going to be talking all about pre-scheduling with Murphy. Um, Miley is going to schedule an appointment from start and then to connection. So she'll connect to an interpreter. She's going to go over how actual users leverage the schedule feature and some best practices. Um, and then, as mentioned, uh, there'll be a Q&A with Miley at the end. So um, again, like please feel free to ask any questions throughout and use that Q&A function. And as you can see, the poll question is now open. So take your time, think about it if you want, and it'll be open for the rest of the webinar. So that's it for me. So I will kick it over to Miley. Thank you for that introduction, Missy. All right, let's get started. Thank you all for coming to our second Murphy Masterclass. If you are at our first where we covered um the murphy basics and turns you all into power users you will recognize this screen so just a couple reminders murphy is a web-based device agnostic platform so we are viewing it um, on a pc desktop but if you are on a tablet or even a smartphone the experience will be the same so last time we covered how to connect to on-demand calls and Murphy is a device agnostic platform. It is also a on-demand and scheduling video and audio uh, connecting platform. So you can do a lot with Murphy. Today, we're gonna be focusing on pre-scheduled calls, um, which can be done through video or audio channels in all 230 plus languages that CLI offers. So, First things first, let's talk about how to pre-schedule calls. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when pre-scheduling a call, you will start in the same place as we start our on-demand workflow. You'll be on your billing screen. So this example of a billing screen um, doesn't have any customized billing questions above the language selection field, um, but your organization might. So you will always have to fill in those um, billing questions first, and then you will go ahead and start selecting your language. So in pre-scheduling call, you will follow the same um, format. So you'll enter in your billing questions, and then you're gonna select your language. Today, we're gonna connect, um, or we're gonna pre-schedule a Russian interpreter. So you will select Russian, and as I mentioned, we are we have video and audio options, and then scheduling, we can connect on demand or we can schedule ahead of time. So Murphy is first and foremost a video platform servicing on-demand calls. So once you've entered in your billing questions um, you've and your channel will default to video and your schedule will default to no, and this connect button will pop up um, and activate. If you click this, you will get in the queue for an on-demand interpreter. But that's not what we'd like to do today. We would like to schedule. So we're gonna flip this to yes. And our connect button turns into a schedule button. Once we click schedule, we will see our scheduling intake form. So there's a lot of information here. We're gonna go through it step by step. <clears throat> so first things first is you'll enter in your contact information. 
Now, this is in addition to any billing questions that you may have entered on the billing screen. Um, the reason why we ask for this information potentially twice, depending on what your organization's billing screen or billing questions are, is because the billing screen is all about reporting who connected to a call. And the scheduling screen is all about getting your contact information so that CLI's scheduling team and our interpreters can communicate with you about your pre-schedule request. So first things first, you're going to enter in your email. This is really important because we will send you email confirmations with the all important reference code, which we will talk about in just a moment. And it is also going to be shared with your interpreter um, and our scheduling team. So if they need to make any adjustments to your pre-scheduled order or they need to clarify a request that you made, this is their first point of contact with you. The second point of contact will be your phone number. Um, if you are pre-scheduling for somebody else in your organization, you have some options. You can enter their information in the contact form, or you can enter your information and just forward those communications along through your own internal channels. It is completely up to you. Next, we have the language selection field. So this is just double confirming that you've selected the language that you are hoping to pre-schedule. The best of us sometimes misclick things or we will be moving too fast and select the wrong language. It's okay, it happens. This is another chance to make sure you get it right. I would like to mention that in addition to your top five languages, you also you continue to have access to all 230 plus languages that CLI offers. So you can select from the 22 video languages or you can select the other 200 plus audio languages um, from this selection. I would like to mention that if you click this selection, you will need to include the language that you are asking for in the special instructions box, which we will get to in just a second. So we're gonna we're looking for a Russian interpreter. Um, moving on, we are going to enter in the scheduled date and time. So a couple things to note here, the scheduled date and time is taken in your device's local time. So if you're on the East Coast and your computer or tablet or whatever device you are on, it is showing East Coast time, that is where the pre-scheduled time. So you don't need to convert any time zones back and forth unless you're scheduling for somebody else who is in another time zone. When doing this, the best way is to click on this box you will get a calendar view. And let's say we wanna schedule an appointment for next Monday at 10 a.m. So we're gonna select the 25th with the calendar view. And the time, as you can see up here, defaults to midnight, that's okay. We're gonna to toggle to the time selection by clicking that time and then use the arrows to adjust the time. When entering in the scheduled date and time, it is always best to utilize these date and time uh, selection fields uh, rather than trying to type it in because the format is very specific. So if you need to go back and change the date, you can toggle the calendar view and you can select a new date. If you need to adjust the time, you can toggle to the time selection and use the arrows, select a time. When you're done and everything looks good, just go ahead and click out of it and you are all set. <laughs> now, another thing to note with the schedule date and time, it's really important that you get this correct um, because on the CLI side of things, we do not have the ability to adjust your date and time you'll have to cancel your request and make a new one if you make a mistake. So take your time with the intake form and get that scheduled date and time correct. After that, you will um, fall upon our first not required intake field. This is the expected duration. This is an estimate. You will not be held to this time, um, but it is always good to include if you know it. The expected duration field should be entered in minutes and whole numbers. So let's say you would like to schedule an appointment for an hour and a half. 
you will enter 90 minutes. Um, if you do not enter a expected duration, that is okay. We will still process your request. We will process it with the expected duration of 30 minutes. Um, and if you need your interpreter to stay longer, they will, but it's always nice for us and our scheduling team um, to get that expected duration when you know it. And just know that we understand it's an estimate. If you ask for 90 minutes and you only need 45, but it's perfectly okay. You will only get charged for that 45 minute time. Below the expected duration, you have a channel field. So it will default to video. You can toggle to audio if you need, if you'd prefer an audio interpreter. Today, we're gonna leave it on video. Our last field is the special instructions. So as I mentioned earlier, um, if you you if you would like to pre-schedule a call in a language other than our 22 video offerings, this is where you will enter in that language request. You can also enter in a request for one of our audio languages to be um, in to be serviced as a video request. This is where you would enter in that request. CLI and our scheduling team will try to accommodate any information that you put in the special instruction field. We cannot guarantee that we can accommodate it every single time, but it's always best to schedule as soon as you know what you need, and we will do our best to get what you want. Um, the special instruction field is not required. So again, enter in any relevant information that our scheduling team or even the interpreter should know before joining, um, before accepting this pre-schedule request. We are, um, you can enter in, you know, the topic of the appointment so that we can get you the right interpreter. You can uh, tell us that you need materials um, for the interpreter to review before the appointment. All of that is done through the special instructions box. If our scheduling team has any questions about it, they will send you an email at that contact email that you placed at the, at the beginning. Today, I don't need to make any special requests, so I'm gonna leave it blank, um, and I am ready to submit this form. As you can see, the schedule field is activated now, so we're gonna go ahead and click it, um, but you can always cancel the request if you don't need it anymore. Um, and I'm going to show you how to cancel it after you place it as well. So keep that in mind. So once we hit schedule, um, you will get a confirmation that we have received your request. And when you hit OK, you are back at the billing screen, ready to place on-demand calls, or you can log out if needed. So as I mentioned earlier, that email address is really important because you will receive confirmation email. So here is a confirmation, what the confirmation, the first confirmation email looks like. Sorry about that. Um, so this email is letting you know that CLI has received your request. Um, it includes some information about it, the when, the language, and then that all important reference code, which will carry you through the entire appointment. Stay with you. Um, one thing I would like to note on this email, um, CLI is based on the West Coast, so we are at Pacific Standard Time. Um, all of the pre-scheduled confirmation emails will include the date and time in Pacific Time. Um, so don't let this fool you. Your appointment will still be at the time that you requested. You just got to do a little bit of math um, to get it to your local time. Additionally, in this email, um, there are some notes about how to cancel your appointment. So you can cancel directly through the email um, by clicking this cancel button. You can also send us an email or call our scheduling team if you have any questions or need to make any um, additional requests to your appointment, or if you just need a little bit of help going through the pre-schedule field, our team is happy to do so. Another piece of information that is included in this email is that um, you have, if you cancel your appointment in less than 24 hours, you 
um, will incur a cancellation fee. Um, this can be discussed with your account representative if you have any questions about it, but it's always a good thing to know. The next email that you will receive is an uh, email confirming your video interpreter. So first you get a confirmation that we've received a request. The next email you get is that your interpreter is confirmed. Uh, this email is a little bit different. It still includes that date and time confirmation, language confirmation, and that reference code that we discussed earlier. But it also includes information about how to initiate your VRI appointment. So when the date and time comes and you're ready to initiate your appointment, um, you've got two options. You can connect directly to your scheduled appointment by clicking the link in the email. Um, this is really helpful if you just don't want to think about it again. You've got your email open, click it, and you can go into your appointment. Your second option is to take your reference code and go back to the Merck platform. There are instructions here, but that's the way that we're going to connect today. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to copy my reference code. I'm going to go back to the Murphy platform. And I'm going to click on that have a pre-scheduled call reference code link that's up at the top. There will be an intake field here. You can paste in that reference code and you can hit find. So it will confirm your reference number. It will display the date and time information. And then you've got two options here. So when canceling a session, this is how you will do it. Again, you cancel with less than 24 hours notice, you will incur that cancellation fee, or you can connect directly to your appointment. So this appointment is at 1020. Um, we are about two minutes early. That is okay. Your interpreter will join about five minutes before the appointment, and you can join about five minutes before the appointment as well. If you try to join a little bit earlier, you will get a um, pop-up on the screen that lets you know that your appointment has not been started yet. And if you can also join um, up to 30 minutes after your appointment has started. So we're going to connect to the interpreter, and then I will explain um, what I mean about that 30 minute wait time. So we're going to hit connect. You will be um, placed in the Murphy and Paul screen. Thank you, Helen. I have a Russian interpreter. ID code Iazaneko1005. How can I help you? Hi, Helen. Thank you for connecting today. So normally when you enter a pre-scheduled call, your interpreter will pop right up on the screen into our in-call screen. Like I mentioned, so once you connect, you are in the in-call screen, just like you would be if you connected to an on-demand call. You have all the same features available to you and your interpreter is right there in the center to help you out. So earlier um, when we were connecting, I was letting you know that you're, you have 30 minutes until after um, your appointment time to connect to your interpreter. So let's say your appointment's at 1020, um, you're servicing a patient, they're about 10 minutes late, no big deal. Your interpreter will wait for 30 minutes from the start of your appointment until 30 minutes after for you to join the call. After that 30 minutes though, they will go ahead and start servicing other requests. If you still need to connect to an interpreter, you always have the option of placing an on-demand call. Um, and then once you're in the session with your interpreter, they will hang out with you until they are no longer needed um, and help you service that request. Thank you, Holland. Thank you. Thank you for using that service. Have a great day. When you end call, you are on that um, Murphy survey screen. Again, it is always optional. Um, you can enter in a star rating, you can leave a comment, and then you can hit submit. And then you're back on your on-demand screen, just ready to place another call. All right, so that is a Murphy pre-scheduled call from start to connection. Now we're gonna talk about some best practices. With pre-scheduling calls, we always, um, as I mentioned earlier, Murphy is first and foremost an on-demand video platform. But including pre-scheduled calls into your language access plan can definitely be a way to improve service delivery in certain cases. So 
here's three examples of some use cases that some of our clients use um, when pre-scheduling appointments. So the first one is, you know you're going to be dis discussing a sensitive topic. Um, you can let us know through the special instructions box what this topic is, and this will ensure the comfort of all parties involved, including your interpreter, um, and so that they can be prepared in advance. Again, it is not required, but it is always helpful for us to make sure that everybody is comfortable and that you get the the right interpreter for the care that you are trying to um, deliver. The next option is, you know, you will be connecting, or the next use case, sorry, is that you will be connecting to a video language other than Spanish or ASL after hours. So at CLI, we offer 22 video languages, um, but the only languages that we offer over video 24 seven is Spanish and ASL. We can service requests in other languages after hours, but they do need to be pre-scheduled in advance. Um, if you connect on demand, there's no guarantee an interpreter will um, be able to answer that call. Our next use case is that you'd like the interpreter to review materials before the appointment. So I mentioned this a little bit earlier. Um, this is another request that you will include in that special instructions box. Um, Every once in a while, an interpreter might need to review some materials, get familiar with the topic, um, and or they're delivering a presentation. There's plenty of different reasons. Um, our interpreters will be always be happy to review those materials beforehand, but you would need to pre-schedule and let our scheduling team know that this is needed um, so that they can have that time to review. All right, let's move on to our best practices. So CLI requires a minimum of 24 hours notice to accommodate an appointment request, but I always suggest to all of our clients to make those requests as far in advance as possible, especially if you have some special information, which we'll, be, we'll talk about at point three. Um, including the inspected, expected duration of your appointment is really helpful for our scheduling team and our interpreters especially with our vis visual languages like ASL. Um, if they're signing for, if you're expecting them to sign for four hours, <laughs> it'd be nice to know that in advance. Um, this will also help us better accommodate your request so that we can ensure the interpreter is available for the entirety of the time that you need them. Or if they're not, we can get you two interpreters. Again, it depends on the request, but we always do our best to accommodate everything that you've asked for and what you need. So the more information we know, the better. And that brings us to point three, which is just including any and all information that will help us get the right interpreter. We can accommodate gender requests, um, interpreter preferences. For example, if you have an interpreter that you've used before with a patient who felt very comfortable with them, you can note their interpreter ID and we can try to connect you to that interpreter again. Again, we cannot always guarantee that we can accommodate these requests, but going up back to point one, if you make them as far in advance as possible, we will do our best to secure them. All right, so those are our best practices. Um, I see that some questions have come in, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the Q&A section. Yes, thank you so much, Miley. That was really awesome and helpful. I learned sure. some things too. All right, we've got some great questions. So. What do I do if my interpreter doesn't show up? So if your interpreter doesn't show up, um, first of all, I apologize. Sometimes we have some technical difficulties or the pre-schedule just for some reason didn't get on their calendar correctly. You can always give us a call um, to our scheduling team and they will help you identify where that interpreter is. But if the request is urgent, your patient is in front of you, you always can rely on our on-demand services. Um, and try to connect that way. If it is an after hours request, I would always suggest that you call our call center rather than schedule through the video, um, because like I mentioned, our video languages are not all 24 hours um, of availability. All right. When and how will I be notified if my pre-schedule can't be fulfilled? 
So our scheduling team, whenever we get those requests, um, goes ahead and reaches out to interpreters. Our interpreters also have the ability to accept pre-scheduled requests on their own. If for some reason we cannot find you an interpreter, our scheduling team will reach out to you through that contact information that you provided and let you know what is happening, why we cannot secure an interpreter, um, and then they will talk you through the different options, either connecting to an audio interpreter or using our on-demand services. Um, they are very capable of figuring out these requests with you and handle them on a very individual basis. So they will reach out to you and work through that request with you. All right. This is more of a maybe a statement or a request, but it's I'd like to see a direct link in the email once the appointment is scheduled. It would be much more efficient for the user. So you do have a direct link to connect to the pre schedule requests in that second email that you receive. Um, we did not connect that way today, but there is a link in that email for you to to just directly connect to the appointment. What if I need to change anything on my request? So at this time, the if you need to change, for example, the date or the time of the pre-schedule appointment, you will have to cancel and resubmit that request. If you need to change something like you need a different interpreter or you didn't include special materials or any of that information, you can email our scheduling team and they will connect that request to your original request. I feel like I'm saying request a lot, so <laughs> I hope it's following. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you have education educational resources for me to send to employees about the pre-scheduling option? Absolutely. So... Uh, thank you for all attending today. As a bonus, we have put together a PDF document with those use cases and a few that we didn't talk about, um, plus those best practices, and that will be sent out to all of you who have attended, and then um, it will you can send it out and disperse it through your organization. All right. I know you talked about this one, but just to go over it again. How far in advance do we need to schedule a video call so CLI has time to schedule and coordinate on CLI's end? So we require a minimum of 24 hours notice, but if you can schedule two weeks in advance, go ahead and do it. Um, if you need a interpreter in less than 24 hours, I always suggest to rely on our on-demand options. If it is a language of limited diffusion or something that our on-demand services are not always capable of fulfilling. You can always reach out to your account representative and they can talk you through those options. But to answer your question, a minimum of 24 hours notice. We have had several instances when we are in the middle of the session and the call drops. Do you have any so, insight into why that could happen? Yeah, so... Um, Murphy is a web-based platform, and sometimes connections can um, drop out every once in a while. We do our best to make sure that our platform is stable and our interpreters have stable connections. Um, if this is happening really frequently, please reach out to your account representative or our customer service desk, and they can help you um, troubleshoot these issues. If it is happening during pre-scheduled calls, um, again, please reach out and let us know about these issues. But if you are dropped from a call, you can always go ahead and connect through on demand um, after the fact and get back in the queue with an interpreter. Murphy does have some reconnect features. So if we know that your call has been dropped unexpectedly, we will place you at priority in the queue for the next available interpreter. All right. Thanks, Miley. Looks like we have one more question. So if you have any questions, get them in now. Um, are we able to connect to a third party during the session? Are we able to connect a third party to the session? Yes. Um, so as I mentioned, when you connect to a pre-scheduled call, you are in our um, normal in-call screen when it's connected. Um, once in that, you have the availability of 
all features, um, including adding an additional party. So you can add an additional interpreter. You can send a phone or a text message link to a guest, um, and they can join that session. That feature does not go away during pre-scheduled requests. Um, and if you need information about that, you can go ahead and visit our last webinar where we covered um, the Murphy in-call features, or we have written support materials, so our user guide would have those instructions as well. All right. Thank you so much, Miley. That about does it okay. um, for us today. <laughs> yeah. Um, like Miley said, be on the lookout for those uh, use cases and best practices surrounding pre-scheduling. Um, there's a lot more in there. It's a great little one sheet that we put together. Um, so be on the lookout for that. And uh, thank you so much again for joining us today. Yeah, it was really fun. Thank you for all the questions. Yeah, have a good one.